Here I am in the kitchen again today, and I've got some good stuff that I'm going to be cooking today. So why don't y'all just come along with me in the kitchen, and I'll show you what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to cook today is a roast, and I'm going to put that in my crock pot. So let me turn this camera around here to the sink where you can see what I'm going to do here. Okay, I've got my roast right there in the sink. I need to get it out of the package. And this roast is too big for my crock pot. I've just got a little small crock pot here that I want to cook this in. So this roast is way too big for my crock pot. So I'm going to cut this roast in half. This is a bottom round roast, boneless bottom round roast. I'm gonna cut, cut this in half. Got a knife sharp butcher knife, uh, a knife, boy, okay, let me see if I can say this right. I've got a nice sharp butcher knife here. Just sharpened it up. Let's cut this roast in half. Okay. Sharp knife is nice to have when you're doing stuff like this. All right, it's just slicing right through it. Okay, so I've taken this roast and now I've cut it into two pieces and I can cook one piece today. And then I'll have another piece uh, to cook at a later date. So that's great. So I'm thinking which one am I going to use? They're both about the same size. Okay, I think I'm going with this one. Let me rinse it off a little bit. You're supposed to rinse your meat off uh, before you cook it, when you take it out of the package, just in case there's any bacteria, germs, or anything like that on it. Okay, so I've got my meat rinsed off. Okay, I'm going to put it in my crock pot right here. Let me see if I can scoot my crock pot over where you can see it better. Scoot it a little closer, maybe. Let me see down in it. Possibly. All right, let me turn my camera down on it. There we go. Okay, you can see the meat there in the crock pot. Now, we want to season this. And I have got a little package of dry onion soup mix. I'm going to use some of that to season this roast with. So I'm going to sprinkle some of that on this on the top of this roast. Let's just put a little bit of this in here. I want some of the actual, I don't want just all onions, I want some of the actual other stuff down in here too. So let me see if I can get to that. Okay, I'm going to spread that around on this. Get a spoon so I can dip them in there. Okay. This onion soup mix is a good seasoning. You know what? I think I'm just going to put it all on there. About that. I'll just try that out. Okay. Put it all on there. I'll spread it out a little bit. And this onion soup mix, it has uh, a lot of salt in it, so you're not going to need to add any salt to this. Okay. And I want to show y'all something. Let me scoot this back out of the way so I can show it to you. I want to show y'all something that is very exciting to me. I'll lean over here where you can see me. Uh, it's very exciting to me. I love this kind of stuff. And that is, I love to be able to use uh, any wild herbs or fruits or anything that just grows out in the woods. I love to, I love to forage for that and use it in my cooking. So I have today some wild garlic. 
and some wild onions that I'm going to use in this recipe. So let me show you. Okay, this is a piece of wild garlic right here. Now, these roots here, I'm going to cut up a little high above these roots so that I can take this root part back out into the yard and plant it and hopefully it'll grow again. So this, this wild garlic grows in my yard, my backyard. And then I have these little wild onions. <clears throat> they grow in my yard as well. See these little wild green onions? They're really, they're real small. But there they are. And so I'm going to uh, clean these and cut them up, the garlic and the onions, and season the roast with that as well. So I'm going to start on this garlic, first of all. We'll start with this. Okay, so I want to cut, cut this off. I'm going to plant that again. So let me stick it over here to the side. And going to have to peel a layer off of this garlic here. Let's see here how I need to do this. Let me rinse it off first. You see, I can even use that part of it. That will season too, right there. That will be seasoning. I can use that part of it. That's like the green part of it shooting out above the ground. So I can use that. See if I can get this outer layer off of the scarlet. I may have to kind of just kill it with my knife, it looks like. That's what I'm going to have to do. Ooh, boy, that smells wonderful. Now, this wild garlic and wild onions, uh, if you use this, if you use this in the uh, spaghetti sauce recipe that I have on my cooking channel, if you use wild garlic and wild onion instead of domesticated, it just totally rearranges that spaghetti sauce. I mean, it, it transforms it <laughs> into a, a, a flavor that is really amazing. So um, if I have this available whenever I make my spaghetti sauce, this is what I use in it because it, it just it just does something to the flavor of that spaghetti sauce. It's amazing. Okay, I'm just about to get this peeled. All right, let me rinse it off again. Okay, so here's my piece of wild garlic. right here. I'm going to slice it up into several pieces. I'm going to put that, I'm smelling of it. Okay, I'm going to put that in my roast. I'm going to cut some little, some little slits in my roast and put this garlic in it. I won't use it all in this recipe, so the rest of it I will just Put in the refrigerator to use later. Okay, so here we go. I should have actually done this before I put this um, the sunny soup mix on the top of this, but I forgot about it. So I'm just going to reach down in here and just cut like a little, a little slit right here. And I'll just take one of these little pieces of garlic and I'll slip it down in that little slit. I'll just poke it down in there. Like that we got it in there and I'll do that in a couple of more places okay let's poke that down in there there we go got that one in there then do one more place and let's put this piece down in there okay that is going to revolutionize this roast that I'm cooking all right, so that's my garlic. Now, I want to clean some of this, uh, these wild onions. Let's put some wild onion in there as well. I'm 
Okay, it looks like the out, outer layer of these wild onions is just going to kind of peel off. That's good. That's great. Okay. It's going to take me a minute or two to get this done. I live way out in the woods, and so I have forests all around my house. And I can go out and find all kind of wild edibles just right here around my house. And that is so neat to me. I really enjoy that. We have plenty of wildlife out here. Um, you like wild meat, deer, squirrel, rabbit, trying to think, doves, quail, and I know some people eat, uh, some people eat possum, some people eat raccoon, we have those out here too. So you could just live off of the land out here where I'm at if you needed to or if you had to. You could you could actually do it. Uh, we have we have poke salad that grows out here wild, just a big bunch of poke salad that grows out here. We actually have I have turnip greens that grow in the spring and in the fall. I don't I don't have to plant them. They just spring up on their own. And what that is, is my dad years ago, when he and Mama lived here, and me and my brothers and sisters, he planted turnip greens every year. He loved turnip greens. And so these turnip greens that spring up now every year are left over from when Daddy planted turnip greens when he lived here. So that's that's interesting. And the turnip greens, you know, they they produce their own seed. So every time they grow, they produce flowers and the seeds, and those seeds fall to the ground and produce more turnip greens. So we've just got a crop of turnip greens that grow here on their own every year. And then I have collard greens that I planted last spring and we ate them through, through the spring until it got too hot and they grew all through the summer but they don't taste good in the summer the flavor's not good on uh, collard greens in the summer they're good in the cold weather so okay i've got these clean i'm going to cut these little little roots off of them i probably should take these little roots and throw them back out there too and uh and let them grow, let them sprout back up. But um, I have my collard greens, they grew through the summer, starting to cool down a little bit, and they're, they grow better in the cool weather, and the bugs don't get on them in the cool weather. So there's just a lot out here, a lot of food out here that you can just eat without having to go to the grocery store and try to buy something. So, 
that's nice. I really enjoy being able to have my own food like this. Okay, this is taking a minute, but I'm almost through. Almost got these little wild onions ready to go. All right, this is the last one. Okay, here we go. Okay, I've got my wild onions cleaned. I've got the roots cut off of the bottom of them. And here's one that fell out of my hand, a little wild onion. Okay, so I'm going to put them in here. Let me move my crock pot back over here where you can see. I'm just going to kind of, they're so small, I'm not going to really try to cut them up very much. I'm just going to kind of cut them off with my knife and drop them down in here. And that, this, these wild onions and the wild garlic is going to really jazz this meat up. It's going to really jazz this food up. Okay. There we go. Now I've got the green tops left right there. And those can be used in other foods. Uh, Carla likes to put these cut up in her omelets. You can put them in a salad or just whatever various foods you have that you want that to go in. <clears throat> so I will save that. I'll set that over there with the leftover garlic. Now we're almost through here. Okay, we've got our meat seasoned. Now, let me reach right here. Okay, here's what's next. I've got onions that I've gotten washed. Not onions, um, carrots. Carrots are washed. Let's stick them in there next. There we go. And I've got potatoes that I have washed and I've cut the eyes out of them so they're blind, they cannot see. <laughs> and I like to leave the peelings on them if I can because that, it, well, because I like it. It's delicious. I like to eat the peelings. And also it's, it's nutrition. It's more tr nutrition. So we're going to put these in here. Now I'm not going to um, season the carrots or the onions. I'm sorry, the carrots or the potatoes because I just kind of like them. I kind of like to eat them unseasoned. I just like the way they taste like that. So, I'm not going to season them. And also, the seasoning off of the, off of the meat, it will season the carrots and the potatoes some. So, I have got my crock pot ready to go. It's got everything in it that it needs. And I'm going to plug this up. And I'm going to let it cook all day. And when it's through cooking at the end of the day, I'm going to show you the meal that we have here in the crock pot. So let me put my lid on it. And we're gonna put it over here. And we're gonna plug it in. Okay, we're gonna turn it on high. We're gonna let it cook all day. Probably, you know, I don't know, six or eight hours, something like that. And while it's cooking, I can just do other things that I need to get done. And at the end of the day, my meal will be ready. So I'll show you later on today what it looks like. All right, so the roast and carrots and potatoes have been cooking in the crock pot on high for seven hours. So we're going to turn this around and we'll let you see what we got here. potato. Let's see if it's tender. Yes, it is. Okay, there you go. Here's some carrots. And they're tender as well. They're done. Okay, and then let's reach down in here and check the meat. I'm just going to stick my spoon down in here and see if this meat is tender and will come apart. Okay, yeah, the meat's done too. So 
there's a piece of the meat right there. So you've got some potatoes, carrots, and roast. And then there's plenty of broth down in here. You get some broth and put it on your potatoes and carrots and meat. And if you if you want to, you can take some of the broth and make gravy with it and put it over your meat and your vegetables. But this is my crock pot supper and it's ready to eat. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you next time.